The table on the panter router tilts to a full 90 degrees, but clamping can be difficult in this position due to the clamps interfering with the pantograph mechanism. We love the lever clamps, so we created a vertical clamping jig to hold your workpiece by clamping from the back. Since the jig is made from wood, it can also have a replaceable sacrificial surface. The vertical clamping jig is an essential shop built jig that allows easier vertical work holding, making the panda router's capabilities even more versatile. It's perfect for cutting decorative details, elongated slots, horizontal boring, and a lot more. Follow along with the supplied drawings and templates and build one for your own shop. Go to the online store at www.pandarouter.com and download the drawings for free. First we trace our two vertical supports. It's critical for this piece to have perfectly square cuts as this will hold our fence at exactly 90 degrees. Make a mark to indicate which edge of the support will be on the table surface and which on the vertical surface. Transfer your center line from the panda router table to the plywood piece that will be the vertical section of your jig. Make sure that the plywood is flush with the edge of the table on the operator side. Use the full scale drawing provided with the plans and align the bottom of the paper to the bottom of the plywood and the edge of the paper marks center line to the center of your wood. Use a transfer punch to mark your hole locations at each crosshair on the drawing. Now turn the paper over, keeping the same bottom and center reference edges aligned and mark the same hole pattern on the other half of your workpiece. Take this piece over to your drill press and drill holes on your marks with a one inch Forstner bit. We like to drill most of the way through the workpiece until just the center point of the bit protrudes through the bottom. Then flip the workpiece and finish the hole from the other side to get a clean hole with no tear out. Next, cut out the vertical supports on the bandsaw. This next section is about making a sacrificial surface for your vertical clamping jig. It's really nice, but not absolutely necessary. If you don't mind your jig getting some cut marks from through workpiece operations, you could skip this part, but stick around to see how we made ours to get some ideas for your own. We went all out on this jig with a replaceable sacrificial zero clearance insert. To make it, cut some quarter inch MDF at a 45 degree angle on the table saw. After building and using a couple of iterations of this jig, we found the bottom three inches gets cut into the most, so just that part needs to be replaceable. While the saw is set up, cut a couple of extra inserts and label them for future use. Glue just the top portion and hold it in place with clamps and a couple of pin nails in the corners. Make sure to avoid shooting pin nails where the router could hit them. We were sparing with the glue near the beveled edge so there wouldn't be much squeeze out in those hard to reach areas. Next cut the elongated slots on the horizontal portion of the jig that mounts to the table. Attach a scrap piece of quarter inch MDF or whatever you have handy to the table using a few pieces of double stick tape. Transfer the center line from the aluminum table to the sacrificial piece. Lay out the center lines of your mortise based on the dimensions in the drawing, then align your workpiece to the center line on the table and clamp it into place on the back end of the table. This task is a perfect application for the vertical clamping jig, but since we don't have one yet, we use the panda router table in a 90 degree position. Set up to cut 3 inch by quarter inch slot using the slot mortise template. With a quarter inch bit, cut a slot all the way through your workpiece, making sure you have a front depth stop set so you cut into the sacrificial piece but don't hit the aluminum table. Unclamp the bottom clamp, flip the table down, then reorient your workpiece to cut the other side. Reclamp and cut the second slot. 
This process underlines the value of the vertical clamping jig. Once both quarter inch slots are cut, switch to a half inch bit. Touch the bit to the workpiece and set the depth to a quarter inch using a depth scale or a setup block like we demonstrated here. Now that the upper piece of MDF is glued to the vertical portion of the jig, we can fit the mating lower section. Mark it and rip down all of the sacrificial inserts to be flush with the bottom of the plywood. Drill two quarter inch holes about an inch in from either end of all of your insert pieces. Using a quarter inch brad point bit, transfer those hole locations to the plywood backer piece, making sure that the two pieces of MDF have a tight seam. At the drill press, drill an appropriate size hole for the threaded inserts that you're using. Offset the hole location approximately 32nd of an inch up from the mark that you made with the brad point. Countersink the holes in the plywood to make sure the threaded inserts don't sit proud of the plywood surface and countersink the screw holes in the MDF inserts as well. Once the threaded inserts are installed, you can test the fit. Notice how when the screws are tightened, the offset holes cause the seam between the insert and the upper piece of MDF to become flush and tight. Using a chamfer bit, cut a small chamfer on the bottom of the MDF insert to prevent sawdust from build up at the intersection of the vertical and horizontal surfaces. Now you're ready to glue up the clamping jig. Remember to keep all the metal fasteners at least four and a half inches from the center line to make sure that the router bit can never hit them. You can chamfer the vertical supports as well to soften the exposed edges. We like to tack everything together with 23 gauge pin nails to hold them and then secure it with wood screws. Clamp the middle section that does not have the screws. Install the T-slot foot nuts and the M6 by 20 millimeter screws from the hold down hardware kit available on our website and slide your new jig under the table and tighten it down with the provided wrench. This jig needs a positive stop to register on the panda router table. The reference is off the operator's side of the table and will make future setup and use super easy. We used a scrap piece of quarter inch MDF for the index board and cut some vertical mounting slots in it. Before we can use the new vertical clamping jig, the MDF needs to be drilled. So this is a good time to take care of that. Drill with a slightly undersized bit and use a flush trim bit in the panda router to make sure that they lined up nicely with the holes in the plywood behind it.
Now you can easily clamp your workpiece and cut some quarter inch vertical slots using the one inch template and the vertical template holder adapter. While the piece is still on the table, cut a 1 inch by 3 inch mortise about a business card thickness deep. Because the jig just simply would not function correctly without a recessed panda router sticker, right? The stop gets attached with a few wood screws and the slots allow it to slide up and out of the way if needed. With the router unplugged and the pointer installed, insert the 6mm shaft of the guide bearing into the center hole of the template holder and scribe a center line on your jig. Using a reliable square, carry that line up the entire face of your jig and across the top. Chamfer the holes and any other sharp edges, but leave the top edge with the square corners. When working with taller work pieces, it can be nice to have the center line on the top edge be right up against the work piece. The vertical clamping jig is now ready for use. Be sure to check out our webinar with Fine Woodworking Magazine to see some of the applications we use this jig for and send us photos of how you use yours. Happy panda routing!